What made you start surfing, Scott? First of all, how did you even find me? <laughs> I've always been infatuated with the ocean and surfing. Um, Florida originally. And so I grew up on the beach, like going to the beach all the time. And surfing always intrigued me, but it was always served up like it wasn't for black people, which never really made sense to me. And my, my mother was the woman in the neighborhood that taught all the black kids how to surf. So I've always been in the water. She taught them how to surf? I mean, how to swim, I'm uh -huh. sorry. She always taught all the black kids in the neighborhood how to swim. Wow. She's very athletic. And so, yeah, uh, she's gorgeous. I just thank you. And you look good, I feel that you look good. And see, nobody has to validate me at all. I'm already validated because I validate myself. You don't like follow. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing I can say, ladies, is you do. Ah, uh, don't give up. Thank you. I just always grew up around the water and always was infatuated with surfing, but it just wasn't welcoming as a culture. And uh, you know, I grew up skimboard and boogie board and swimming and all that stuff, but it actually it can be kind of unsafe. I mean, you know, in Florida, you come by the little surf spots and you see Confederate flags, and, you know, all kind of stuff. So I just never really felt safe doing it. As I got older, I started trying to connect with some black surfers and uh, to you know, get into a more welcoming environment and really study study the art of surfing. And uh, I bumped into my homegirl, Mimi, the <laughs> surf chick, and she's been taking me around to the spots That's in Cali, me. <laughs> showing me all the secret spots in Cali and kind of show me where and how to move. And, so now and we're really not going to show those on camera. <laughs> no, you, can't get the, you can't get the secret spots. <laughs> But no, you know, the show she's made it a lot more well. Hey Sun Tribe, I'm here at Surf City Huntington Beach. Let's get into it. about to catch some waves huh with you you getting out there with me <laughs> yes a little bit well you know i dislocated my shoulder you don't work so you know um you are you being the athlete that you are uh -huh. i'm sure you will be able to make it like i'll guide you or your right shoulder? my left one all right we're gonna work with it yeah it's actually in here okay it's actually in here something i tweet so we just gotta yeah figure out what the diagnosis is and get you back up in the water baby. Yeah. not only does he train people half his age but you know to i have to work out with them young cats keep them in line you know yeah I mean? yeah let them know it's not a game and this guy never stops working out like he knows all the martial art how many martial arts do you know huh? well you never really know them no i know uh I probably studied nine, ten, wow. eleven. Wow. My first style was four styles in one. So I start with a base package of four. Taekwondo, uh, Muay Thai, Hapkido, and that's, Judo. That's amazing. Those are my first four rolled up into one. So I started punching and grappling at the same time. 
which is a huge advantage. Some people only know how to punch, kick, other people only know how to grapple. I was fortunate enough to go into a place where they taught us multiple disciplines at once. And you never stop working out. Like I try to tell this guy to not work out before he comes and surf. It's not but an option. <laughs> he can't do it. It's not an option. Right. It's my not, lifestyle, yeah. I don't work out. It's just who I am. I enjoy exercise. The chemicals that released in the bloodstream make you feel good. It's like that exhilaration in the ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, the body's meant to move. You gotta move it. So, I, what can you tell those of us, like you were saying something about motivation and, and inspiration. I was like, dag, I wish um, I had that on camera, what you were saying, because that was um, so deep to me. We were talking about the, uh, let me call it a nice one. We were talking about the uh, difference between motivation and discipline. So when you're motivated, you have a goal. Like a lot of people call me, I have some in my phone right now. Uh, I got a video shoot coming up, or a war, I'm posting an award show. I gotta get in this dress, I got a shirtless photo shoot or whatever. So let's, let's start working out. Okay, now you have a tangible goal to work towards. But if you're not disciplined, then you'll constantly have to find external means to get you out of the house and into the gym or on the bike or in the ocean. That's motivation and motivation wanes. It comes and goes. You know our motivation goes up, yes. something's going on and it goes down. Yes. Then we find ourselves back at ground zero. Yeah. But when you're disciplined, it doesn't matter. That's what I need. It doesn't matter what's coming up. Uh -huh. Because you do it anyway. Because you know eventually something will come up and you'll already be ready. I was telling you, we were having a conversation and I was saying, when I am 20 pounds heavier, I can't tell you how much I get axed out. Like so many guys ask me out on dates. Like right now, I'm freaking popping that I'm 20 pounds heavier. I cannot tell you. you Every time I who, walk out the door, who are you popping so many. With? Do you want these dudes? <laughs> so many guys have asked me out on you, dates. Listen, sharks, I can't even. Sharks can sense blood in the water. Okay, when a guy sees you and he senses your spirit that you're not feeling like you're at your best and you feel vulnerable, that's when he's coming to try to prey upon some gap in your life. Mm. Some mm. space that he figures he can fill that void and come taking advantage of you in, in a moment of what he perceives as your weakness. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But when you are alpha female and your shoulders are back and yes. your chest is out, and you really glowing your thing. And then I don't date much. That's because the alpha, <laughs> you know, it's less dirt bag. They scared of you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Them base level cats yeah. are not going to approach you because they don't feel like they can take advantage of you or they don't feel like, you know, you have as much vulnerability that they can exploit. So, yeah, you're going to be a little more lonely, but it's lonely at the moment. <laughs> Pardon the language. Hey, hey, leak, leak that out. Hey. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you know, I look at it like a pyramid. As you yeah. go up the evolutionary ladder, you have less less volume, less people. Wow. You know, less bandwidth. Because so I cannot believe, like, I was... You can have quantity. Mm -hmm. Anybody, you can... I, you, he'll probably, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's about quality, right. not quantity. It's not just about filling up space and filling up time and just doing something mm. just because. It's about adding somebody to your life that's really adding to your life in some way. Mm -hmm. I ain't just talking about monetarily. You know, right. this cat feeding your spirit. You know what not I'm saying? This cat, this cat not, not feeding, feed, not and shoving crab. macaroni and cheese down your throat because he <laughs> thinks that how he can control you. Right. See, food, if you can resist the urge to eat and the urge to have sex. Next part down. Well, you're halfway there. <laughs> but those, those two things, a lot of people have problems saying no to. And it can drag you down into some dangerous waters. Because wow. you end up dealing with people and things that you shouldn't be. Because you're making decisions just because. So, you know, you That's have to deep. be That's deep, the Scott. same That's discipline deep. that you exercise in working out and eating right. You exercise that in relationships too and your discernment and saying, yeah, I could do this, but why? Wow. What's it going to lead to when you know? You know when you meet this cat, this isn't a... So many dudes, so many, like, a, like everywhere. He's not a candidate for the long haul. True. But you know that, so you're going to turn him into that? No. no. Let him be who he is, have some fun, and then send him on his way. I'm not saying be a hermit. I'm saying let people be who, they're, who oh, they man. are. And then you decide where you want them in your life. Well... Instead of trying to force them into a place that they don't fit. And they end up pulling you down. Right. Life is hard enough without adding more to it. You deep, Scott. You deep. I'm gonna turn this off right quick. 
<laughs> what do you do with the junk mail when you come home? Throw it, throw it in the trash. What trash, about? trash, trash. Yeah, but that big check getting all your attention. <laughs> right. Work for the big check. Fuck right. the junk mail. Exactly. No junk mail, fellas. Stop being junk mail. Stop cluttering up the box with useless Ooh. info. Bring something of value and substance. Change value. somebody's life for the better. Value. You know what I'm saying? If not, leave her alone. That's right. Value. Leave, leave her better than you found her. You know what? That's that's like that's a really that's a that's a that's a value a life of a good person. Yeah, you should you do know? that anyway. It's not about leave dating. people better than you, you should found. leave every situation better. Every. Than you found. Pick up your stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't litter in the ocean. Leave the ocean a better place than it was when we got here. Yes. Leave every interaction yes. on a positive note. Yes. That deserves positivity. Keep it moving. That's facts. Good time. I wanna uh just say it's just it's just real. Doing this for your fans, I just wanna applaud y'all, man. I think that's incredible. Make some fucking noise for B T So Scott, tell them about how you were talking about if anything ever happened. Like the fact that we fast for the amount of days that we do it prepare us. Explain that to us. I mean, you know, a lot of things happen. You might not be able to eat for the weekend if a disaster or some shit pop up. Mm -hmm. But that ain't nothing if you done fasted for 28 days. Yeah. You already did that. So, right. you know, when life does throw adversity at you, we done trained for it. Yeah, and how most folks, they only got a good two minutes. That's it. If we training while we fasting, that's, that's how you feel when stress if I come up. do this shit on an empty stomach, right? I know I'll do it to you if you got a fucking quarter pounder with cheese in your stomach, <laughs> you greedy ass. <laughs> two apple pies. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I'm going to be able to win in that situation. Mm -hmm. I like my chances. So... When I was in my senior year of college, I got in a real bad car. I don't think I ever told you about this. I got in a real bad car. You see these marks on my forehead? Yeah. That's from the windshield. Hit wow. the window. Almost went out the car. See that light? See that? Wow. My wrist is plastic. See that scar? Really? Yes, oh my gosh. Like I don't have this bone. Uh-huh. See? They wow. took that out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I can't move my wrist. Mm -hmm. My wrist doesn't move. I had three surgeries on this. Uh, I broke my arm in a car accident in college. And uh, during the surgery, they discovered I was allergic to anesthesia. So my lungs collapsed. Oh my God. So I went in with a broken arm and came out on the ventilator. So I spent nine days in intensive care. It's my senior year of college. And uh, when I came out, I had a completely reconstructed wrist. And uh, I felt vulnerable. I felt like I couldn't defend myself. You know, I'm walking around with a cast, the brace, my muscles are uh, shrinking. And so, my girlfriend at the time picked me up from the hospital. And we went to the bank to get some cash to get something to eat. And I was really depressed about where my life was going to go from now on. And a guy came walking out of the bank and he only had one arm. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of snapped me back into the proper perspective. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to become a victim to this. So I started going back to the dojo when I still had a cast on. Wow. And I started training martial arts feverishly, six days a week. And what I did was I turned my weak wrist into my strongest punching hand. So I'm right-handed, so traditionally I use power from the right side. I taught myself how to use power from my left so that I made my weakness into my biggest strength. So now, the side that had the injury is the side I can punch the hardest from. That's deep. And so it's like we were discussing. When you find something that's a weakness, I don't perceive it as a weakness anymore. It's an opportunity for growth. Because if I can add, I'm a better fighter than I was before the accident. Why? Because now I have power from both sides. But it's because of a decision that I made that I wasn't going to be a victim of my circumstances. I was going to use my circumstances and become better. And that's what I did. And so, if you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never change. And if it wasn't for that accident, I wouldn't have gone deep into that 
martial arts rabbit hole that I'm still in 30 years later. But I wouldn't be doing all the things that I do. I wouldn't be traveling the world with artists. I wouldn't be doing personal training on the level that I'm doing. I wouldn't have met you. Would have with half here. the people your age. Yeah, right. I wouldn't be out here in the ocean. You know, I wouldn't have met working them hard too. Working like them yourself. hard. So, <laughs> you know, out of that tragedy, I created a pretty dope ass life. Yeah. And um, you know, it wasn't as hard as I would have thought it would be if you're just thinking about it. You know, so my advice to people is to work on your weaknesses and don't overthink things just do it what's the worst that could happen what if i failed who cares at least i tried i didn't go park it on the couch and let my arms shrivel up nothing and just be you know mediocre and so many people do so yeah, many people take nature. one injury and be easy. like oh my leg oh it's I easy got they'll tell you oh don't, don't take it oh, I got don't it. take advanced physics in high school just take general science if you can graduate and leave yeah but all the people who took biggest physics have higher paying jobs yeah so we go through a little bit more discomfort but the rewards are exponentially better so you know i probably would have still been in tallahassee florida not that there's anything wrong with that but I've just been so many more places and done so many more things out of that tragedy. So, work on your weaknesses. I always learn some life lessons. There's so, so much they're not weaknesses. Layered. Not if you can change it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, let's make your strong, your shoulders, this your strongest it. body part. Yeah, because they're then not. Then what's going to happen? <laughs> you can paddle a lot past the pier. You know what I'm saying? You become a better surfer that way. Is it going to be fun? No. Is it going to be in? I can paddle past the pier, but maybe not now. I'm just now. saying with efficiency, <laughs> like the way you don't even have to think about it. Like, yeah. where is it there? Okay, cool. Right. But don't even not a thought. Well, right. That's a far paddle out. So yeah. my shoulders are the strongest they've been in my whole life. Yeah. And you'll be a better surfer that way. I want to. I really want it. But it's going to be it uncomfortable. Now. But if you decide in front of it, yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, I'm going to conquer it. Why? Because on the other side of that uncomfortable is ultimate fitness. That's where it's at. That's and less, at. less boyfriends, but quality, man. More quality. It's beautiful and glassy. Yeah. I was like a surf right now. I just wanted to uh, share that experience with you because it actually changed my life. Injuries take a lot of people down. Yeah. Way down. You know what I'm saying? I actually used mine to, to level me up. And I didn't know when I did it what it was going to lead to. And you won't know. But it's infinite spaces and possibilities for things to happen and you don't know unless you just get out there and try them. You know what I'm saying? I was literally just trying to feel more confident that I could defend myself. <laughs> Change my trajectory. Wow. That's what a real champion is. That's 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 the stuff the champions are made of. Well, you don't that's really, you stuff. really don't know what you're doing in the moment. You know what I'm saying? I was just taking the next step, which is I'm gonna have to really step my game up in order to not feel this moment. So that's what I was doing. And that move, that one step, opened up literally six continents possibly. Wow. That's where I've been.